Good evening, Church of the Living God. Uh, tonight we are having a sermon that says children is a treasure from God. Children, a gift from God. And our text of consideration is Psalm 127, verse 1 to 28. We are not going to read that whole text. We serve a wise God who in his infinite wisdom has given the gift of children to many of our homes. And the psalmist calls them a gift and a reward. In Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5, where he says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Let us pray. Everlasting Father in heaven, we are grateful for a time to come before you. We are grateful, Lord, that you are here with us. May you accept our worship as we are going to read your word. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may fill us so that we may hear you and we may take instruction from your word and live according to his statutes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, even for the children that you have borrowed us. Teach us to live right so that they may live right to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Children are a possession from God, a treasure he has loaned to us, a precious gift that God wishes us to handle as precious. Jesus in his ministry treasured children. I think we can all testify to this through the way he rebuked the disciples who wanted to chase the children from his presence. He said to them, let the children come unto me, for the kingdom of God is for as such as this. That's Luke 18, verse 16. Yes, I can see the questions on your brows, asking me, gift and reward. How? When they are born, we spend sleepless nights caring for them. When they get sick, we worry and fail to eat. When they get older, they lie to us and talk back to us. What do you mean by gift and reward? Yes, God is expecting us to be stewards and raise them to his glory. Children are made in God's image. And as such, God wants us to value and care for his gifts. Let me share some ways in which children are a gift and a reward from God. God says they are. It's as simple as it is. We do not need to debate or hold a church board or a theological seminar to prove that children are a gift from God. Psalm 127, 3 to 5 has testified that. Children teach us to be best versions of ourselves. They provide a front row seat to view the miracle of pre procreation. Yes, children do as we do, not as we say. So whatever we do or say is what makes sense to them, not what we tell them to do. Scripture then says to us that we must be the pride of our children and the children must honor their parents. In Exodus 20, verse 12, the verse says, Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Proverbs 17, verse 6 says, Children's children are the crown of old men. I love the last part. And the glory of children is their father. So we are heroes to them. We are people that they can look up to. So this can be an incentive to us as parents to live a life that can be copied, to practice a faith that can be practiced by our children. 
to serve a God that can be served by our children. We need to live a life that can be emulated by our children. Yes, we must have the golden rule always ringing in our minds that we must do unto others as we would like them to do unto us, as directed in Matthew 7, verse 12. Children are one of God's instruments working patience in us. Proverbs 14, 29 says, Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. When we are quick to display anger, we are teaching them to cherish anger. The Bible says, refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not, it tends only to evil. That's Psalm 37, verse 8. Many a people got themselves in trouble because of anger. They were forced to act irrational and ended up doing things they regretted for the rest of their lives. Some were imprisoned because of anger. Some even died because of anger. We should also avoid pushing them to anger. Ephesians 6 verse 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Teach them how to treat their bodies with purity and dignity. The Bible says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So everything we eat, we drink, we do and say should honor God. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 31. The use of alcohol should not be allowed. Giving children to prostitution is a sin before God. Let them know that there are, are abusers out there who can ruin their lives. Food should be taken when needed, not because it's available. Practice self-control in front of your children or even away from them, as this will show them that those who do well live a happier and longer life. Titus 2, 11 and 12 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. Our dress code is an example to our children and a security in their future. They need to know that modesty is part of Christianity. Teach them that materialism is not happiness. That is why King Solomon said that it is better to have a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. Proverbs 17, verse 1. Let the children know that they should have things that they need, not once. We must not introduce them to a habit of consumerism, lest they may want the whole world to themselves. Bring them up in Bible-based discipline. Let the children carry the torch of our faith. In Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7, Moses tells the children of Israel to pass the laws of God to their children. And in Proverbs 22, 6, we are told to train them up in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. God expects us to give our time and guidance to our children. When we pass our faith to them, we are simply saying they belong to the same community of faith that we are in. And therefore, they must worship as we worship. Let us teach them to rely on God during their challenging times, during their happy times. Let them know that they can rely fully on God as God promises that his plans are to prosper them and to give them a future. When well taught, children can keep their faith even in perilous times like these ones that we are living in. Keeping our homes in a Christ-centered manner strengthens our children's faith. Let them know that even Christians have challenges, but
but God gives them power to overcome as Jesus overcame. John 16, 33. Children are a reflection of God the Creator. One thing that I have known and seen as children grow around me is that children, in all their dealings, they are genuine. When they forgive, they forgive. That is why Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is for such as children. If we can get the spirit of children of forgiveness, if we can get the spirit of children of genuineness in everything that we do, heaven is ours. Children are not able to keep grudges unless they are taught to do so. Therefore, children must be taught to love God and to love those around them. I know a lot of us have, as parents, we have failed in this one. We really need to come down and be retaught. Parents, let us model what is good to our children. Let us act justly. Let us love mercy. Let us be truthful in small and big things. And above all, let us be humble. Yes, children can learn to forgive when they see us forgive. They can learn to be humble by praying for their enemies. And all these are learned from us as parents. Many are children are at risk even in their own homes because they are not treasured. Today, I want to pray with a parent, with some parents who are saying, Lord, teach me how to parent as you parent. As you are seated there and you are thinking of these things that we have been talking about, raise your heart to God and say to him, Lord, I need your power to have a parenting stamina that comes from you. Lord, I need the power to lead these children to you in the way I speak, in the way I walk, in the way I do my things. Even when they are not seeing me, Lord, I want to be like you. I am not seeing you physically, but I believe you always do the best. Therefore, teach me to parent like you have parented me. As parents, God is seeking us this evening. He is saying to us, I have borrowed you, I have loaned you children, so that you can teach them my statutes, so that you can draw them to me, and together you can come and be with me in heaven. I want to implore you, parents, to stand with me as we pray for a stamina to parent like God. I want to invoke you children to copy that which is right before the eyes of the Lord. Let us stand and pray. To our everlasting and faithful Father in heaven, Lord, we are grateful for a time to be at your feet, to learn of what you want us to do. This evening, Lord, as parents, we are seeking for your presence in our lives, that the lives that we are living can be copied, and these children may be ready to go to heaven because of us. We are praying, Heavenly Father, even for our children. May they learn more of you so that they may be drawn closer to you. Father, we pray for a special blessing for Solusi community. As we parent these children, Lord, teach us to be submissive to you. Teach us to be humble. Teach us to be faithful. Teach us to be just. Teach us to love mercy. And teach us to be truthful, Lord, in everything that we do. Father, we don't want to be bad leaders before the eyes of these children. We don't want, Lord, to lead them astray, but we want them to be drawn closer to you, because of our behavior, our hopes, Heavenly Father, is that you are going to take us together with them to heaven. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you have heard this prayer and you are going to answer it beyond what we have asked. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.